Our Story Productions presents Martin County on TV, spotlighting the organizations, businesses, and citizens who are making a difference in our community today. And with interviews and stories done by local television shows over the last 25 years, here you're sure to learn more about the county we call home. Get ready for this is Martin County on TV. Martin County on TV, talking business. Hi, I'm Jeff Rouse, and welcome to another episode of Martin County on TV. We have two very special guests for us today. Ladies, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Nancy Katzer. And I'm Kim Kappen. Ladies, thank you for being here. Very excited. And for those that don't know, both these ladies are artists. And I say that in a very complimentary sort of way because I know you're very talented and we're thrilled to have you on the show. Uh, I know and many people realize that you've both been involved in some very unique, fun projects here in town that we want to share with the folks. Let's start with you, Nancy. Tell us about the project that you did fairly recently. Okay, on um, 4th Avenue in downtown Plaza, I was the designer and helped get the mural on there. It's called Celebrating the Arts. And uh, we got a grant from the Red, the Red Rock Center, got a grant um, to help pay mm -hmm. for the supplies and things. And um, the Red Rock Center wanted it to be a community-based mural. And so we did have the community come out and help paint it, um, which was great. It was fun having them um, and having a lot of people out there helping. So that was a really nice thing. And everybody kind of took ownership of the mural, which was nice. And we got it done in five days, but I couldn't. You did that whole thing in five days? Five days. That's amazing. Yeah, but wow. I had lots of help, so that was great. <laughs> That's you know. really cool. Well, it's awesome. Oh, thank it's you. done very well, and I know it has drawn a lot of attention. For those that haven't seen it, it's at the end of Main Street right. uh, on the Fourth. end of the fourth block. Right. Uh, very, very cool. You can't miss it. It's awesome. It's so great large. job. Great, oh, thank you. Great job. Kim. Well, we just recently did outside of this building a mural, and um, I really, what I really liked is being able to make the community a part of it as well, mm -hmm. um, and then to involve the downtown, all the businesses, and try and incorporate them, and and um, just you know being able to to reach out to the community and do something pro you know project like this was really neat. Um, I know I enjoyed. Um, working and i know you had originally said can we do it on the wall and of course that's where mur murals are done and i was thinking about how bumpy the wall oh, was yeah. sure and yeah. so i thought if we could put it on wood i could make faces <laughs> of <Sure>. people <laughs> and not have them be distorted but um yeah so i was able to do it on the wood and then cut it out sure and then put them up and uh, i know other people help paint the umbrellas and the the blue on top and then you know i uh, it was it was neat it was neat to work well what i find interesting in both of the murals is they're unique from each other mm -hmm. and both represent our community so well Yes, I mean, uh, yeah. one towards business side of downtown businesses, and the other one representing the arts uh, and the arts community uh, uh, as far as places to, like the Opera House and Red Rock and different things like that. So I think it's really cool. Both of them, excellent jobs. So if I understand correctly, both projects had a grant that helped cover some of the costs. Is right. that correct? Oh, yeah. awesome. When you did these murals, did anybody along the way mention about a possibility of maybe doing some more murals? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which would be thrilled yeah. to see that happen yeah. next year. I yeah. think that would be really neat. There's some groups that are very gung-ho in making some of this happen, mm -hmm. and uh, the two that you did I think are awesome. Uh, Nancy, start with you. Tell us about a couple other projects in the past that you've done. Well, I did. Um, the fire department asked if I could. They got a storage container out in front of their building, and uh, it wasn't very pretty. But so they had Al Martin paint it red, and then they asked me to put their logo on the outside of it, and that really oh, cool. made that look really nice and a part of the fire department now. So that was really fun to do. I like that. Sure. And then in my husband's vet clinic, I painted the whole inside, and that's has a lot of murals. It's really it. neat. Awesome. So he kind of he kind of turned me loose, and that was nice. And you've done some in, in some other communities, if I recall correctly. Yes, I just helped with one in Okoboji, Iowa this summer. I helped a friend who's a public muralist, 
and she asked me to come down and help her, so I did that. Um, so that was nice. I did um, a mural in New Orleans um, for a church. I painted the Six Days of Creation um, wow. on their fence, and they and that turned out really nice. They wanted to be like a teaching um, mural so that people could understand what the Six Days of Creation was. So that was nice to f have fun doing that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And Kim? Well, um, I think I go back far enough. Uh, the vet clinic, um, the the big, the Fairmont vet clinic. Yeah, yeah. Fairmont vet clinic. I did a mural oh, uh, sure. there quite nice. a while ago, and then um, Doctor to the Rescue asked me to do some murals for the uh, children's um, area where they in the clinic, in you know the different rooms. Oh, that's and, nice. Yeah, and that was fun because it was children. Um, oriented and so I was able to do a Minnesota room and then uh, how fun yeah and then one um, it was a, a South American uh, room and then uh, under the water oh, oh sure yeah it probably so, helps the children yeah. if they're afraid or something it's probably a good thing that for them to see I hope so yeah, yeah. they um, they asked me to come back and do uh, an area too and I just uh, painted right next to where they bring the children in after surgery oh, and just so to kind of nice. calm them down so when they first yeah. wake up oh cool and yeah. so I did that that was fun um, the China buffet that was a lot of fun oh yeah while they were remodeling that I was painting the mural really at the time. yeah and that one was tricky because I would go after work after teaching and then I would be there till 11 or 12 at night because they had a time frame, you know. Yeah, of course. And they needed to make that. Um, well, and, um, different murals here and there. I've, I've done some in Okaboji too, um, uh, the Hallmark store and some other places. But I just, I just love getting that quiet time and when I have the freedom to kind of do what I want. They give me a start. You know, and then having that freedom to just kind of develop it sure. you know, as I go along. And Ladies, they're incredible and we love them. But tell us, what is the purpose of a mural? What, why, is, why would someone want a mural in their town or downtown? Part of it could be for information, just to show the town what we have here. What's like the celebrating the arts, all the different kinds of sure. arts that we have in Fairmont. And then with yours, um, the different ahead. businesses. Um, you know, I was kind of tickled. When I saw some of the businesses that I was putting on the bag, I, I was thinking to myself even, oh, I've got to go in there. And then I thought, well, how about those people, like you were saying, mm -hmm. how about those people that come into town? And uh, maybe just, oh, there's a list of restaurants. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was there. Or, hey, let's go check this one out this time. Um, plus the pops of color. And I think with the mural that um, we did out here, um, the umbrellas, the attention that draws to it also kind of gives a, the community, um, well, it shows us that we're excited about the community mm -hmm. and that it's worth looking at and that we have things to give and provide. And so I like to see that excitement come into play. Yes, and it's great for tourism. People come through and see exactly what we have here. They see all the businesses, the restaurants, and then what we have for the arts. So we show that we are a really good town, vibrant, and doing a lot of things here. And they're both interactive. I like that aspect. Oh, for I... photo ops, the number of people in both of them that I've personally seen that have taken selfies or group shots or the picture of the kids or whatever in front of these murals has been astounding. There's just a lot of people enjoying those. And there will be, I was told, will be a Facebook page connected to this oh, that people good. can send in pictures uh, of, of their selfie or whatever they take. Because I think that'd be great fun. So yeah, that's a cool thing. it would be thing. fun. shows people so, are enjoying the art. And I know on, on the one that you did, I, I noted that how many... Correct me if I'm wrong. They're all businesses that you can purchase something in downtown, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, and go in and shop. Yeah. Shopping. And how many of those are there uh, represented on that? Well, there must be 20 that um, said that they were interested, that sure. they wanted to be a, a part of it. And then we had one come in later that didn't shop. That I have a little dog. Oh my goodness! How cool! Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> cool. And so um, that will represent um, Mark of the Town. So that will be up too. That's awesome. And that's done and ready to go up. So, um, oh, yeah, 
Yeah, but that was a clever way of inter, you know including that business. I was amazed that there was twenty some businesses downtown that you can purchase. People say there's nothing downtown. There you go. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of places that you can go in and make uh, make a purchase right downtown. Mm -hmm. And as far as the arts. Uh, uh, Tell us about the different businesses uh, that are represented on there. The Red Rock Center of the Arts, who sponsored the, who got the grant, um, has all kinds of art for children. They have classes. Um, they have an art gallery where they have a different artist every month in there, which is really nice. And they bring in concerts. And then the Fairmont Opera House brings in all kinds of touring shows. And then they have our summer theaters there and perform theaters. And now they're starting up a really big children's theater program at the Opera House. And they're and, very private, bringing in um, different, all kinds of different acts. And the, that mural represents those organizations right. quite yeah. well. So we help get the word out about those that are a tremendous asset for a community. Well, you know, uh, you both have done a lot in the community, and we appreciate that. And I've known you both for some time. But because I know you both, <laughs> I, has, I didn't share that we should learn who you are in case someone doesn't know who you are. Tell us a little bit about you personally. Um, I, we, my husband and I moved here to Fairmont in 1983, and so we've been here the whole time, and then my husband bought the, um, he bought the small animal and equine part of the practice from the Fairmont Vet Clinic and started his own veterinary clinic. Um, so we've been running that, and so that's been really nice. We had a daughter when we moved here. She's now grown and gone, but it was a wonderful place to raise sure. kids. I just loved it. It's perfect. Wonderful. And Kim? Uh, I'm originally from Iowa and my husband and I moved here uh, 36 years ago and I taught um, art for 34 years. I just recently retired Congratulations. a couple years ago yeah, congratulations. Um, and uh, we raised um, two boys here and I'm with you. I love the school system. Oh, schools are great. I love the area. I love this whole community and we felt really fortunate to to raise our boys here and now um, Bailey is, is back and he's student teaching and oh, nice. and so yeah um, and I'm hoping he'll kind of stick around and yeah so my husband is uh, Ned and um, he is the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in town uh, but he worked for Riverbend Business Products for many years before that and um, again I plan to retire here we love it we yeah. just love it and well, the passion that both of you have for our community shows through in your murals. Oh, I think that uh, says a lot about the style and the desire to to create something to draw attention and to honor uh, our community. So, if I understand correctly, it's both of these murals in part were financed through grants, correct? Correct. That is wonderful. And you know, if someone has a building in town that they would like a mural on because i know there's going to be more coming right, right. more coming we hope. so uh we would we would love to have uh information given to them about how they proceed in doing that correct correct so if someone would like to have a mural on their building or nor, more information about having a mural in their building for now let's just have them send an email to me and i will get it to the people that need to have it we're thrilled to have you on the show and we're going to have you come back and talk about another mural and murals that you're doing in the future, because I know you'll be doing more. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you. for coming in. Thank you. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome into the studio. Uh, today we're flipping the script a little bit. Um, I'm going to be doing the interviewing, and for those of you who don't know, my name is Blake Potoff, and I'm the executive director at the historic Fairmont Opera House here in lovely Fairmont. And today we're flipping that script because I am here with Mr. Jeff Rouse, um, who is the creator and the brain behind our story production. So, Jeff, thanks so much for being here today, and, and for having me, frankly. Um, so. I wanted to talk to you today about how all of this started. Uh, it's been quite the ride, me getting involved with this and doing some of the interviews, and um, I really, really enjoy it, but where did it come from? Where did it start? Well, that's a really good question, and you know, this seems kind of odd to me, because I'm <laughs> yeah. not used to being on this side <laughs> asking me questions yeah. uh, about what's happening, but mm -hmm. it is a pretty interesting story yeah. that uh, your viewers might find interesting. Yeah. In, uh, Fairmont has always been very fortunate 
to have local cable television shows for the last 25 mm -hmm. years. Uh, Janet Ruth, Al Travis, uh, Jeff Hagen, to name just a few, that made this possible for many, many years. Well, in 2007, uh, all that was coming to an end. And I and my wife, as local business owners, thought this was too bad because this was such a great asset to our community mm -hmm. to promote through video and to talk about what's happening in, in our community on television. We didn't think it should end. Mm -hmm. So I started complaining as you do. <laughs> yeah. Started yes. complaining around town to other business people like, well, this is ridiculous. We should be able to keep this alive. And you can imagine what everybody said. Oh, I'm well, sure. You think it's such a good idea. <laughs> Why don't you do it? That's right. Like, oh, yeah. for God's sakes. And then it was intriguing to me. Yeah. Uh, I told my wife, I says, you know, I think we could do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided, made the commitment to each other that we would proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, I went and talked to Shelly and Bruce at uh, Gemini Studios yeah. about shooting it. Uh, Bruce wouldn't give me an answer for a while. He had to ponder it and think about yeah. it. And it was driving me crazy because now I had uh, made the commitment myself. and. Uh, uh, he finally agreed mm -hmm. to go forward as far as shooting in different things. He did a very fine job for about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's Shelly. Shelly ended up doing it, thank yeah. God, and, yeah. and has done a great job for us over the years. What kind of things have been milestones for you? What um, what different interviews? Are there, is there one or two that stick out to you? Or, or maybe there's projects uh, that stick out. What kind of things have really gotten you to this point, do you feel? Good question. Uh, when we started, we did your pretty traditional local show with interviews and different things. Well, it didn't take very long before uh, we decided we needed to do something a little different to draw attention. Mm -hmm. So we did. Uh, we came up with uh, the idea of a soap opera, and it was called As the Corn Grows. Mm -hmm. And it would be kind of a spoof on soap operas and, and kind of show country living. And we did it only to draw attention. We knew it was going to be corny. We knew it was going to be a little ridiculous. We knew it was going to be great fun. So we developed this soap opera as just something to draw attention. Well, almost immediately when it started airing, we were contacted by other communities that said, that is pretty clever. Mm -hmm. Can you do something for us? That's how it all began. So uh, over the years, we keep, uh, kept expanding and expanding with our uh, viewing area, showing as the corn grows, as well as covering local things in all these different mm -hmm. communities, uh, to uh, 1,500 towns, nine states. And I'll give total credit to the soap opera for drawing the attention that we wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, the, when I say drawing the attention, it's quirky, it's corny, yeah. it's ridiculous, mm -hmm. and we know it. Mm -hmm. But that's what drew attention. If it wouldn't have been for the soap opera, As the Corn Grows, we would not be in 1,500 towns, mm -hmm. nine states today. Well, it's it's fascinating how how quickly that kind of grew. And, and, and in that, there were some local celebrities who really helped build that too. So, and you were telling me before, there's something like 100 local celebrities here from, from the area that have been involved in that. How did that come about? You just go out and talk to people and say, hey, I need you for five minutes? <laughs> that was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, for, for my wife and I. We would think of a character, we'd talk to Shelly, we would develop it some mm -hmm. more and do some different things before usually we had a person. Mm -hmm. Then it'd be kind of like, oh, you know what? I saw so-and-so the other day. He would be perfect for that part. So pretty soon we'd invite them to come in. And people, thank God, people were really willing to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And we had over, like you said, over 100 people from our community that have appeared on the show a strong 65 had character names and backstories. Wow. So they were continual, uh, continuing to be on the show over the years wow. that it ran. Uh, the soap opera today is still being aired in syndication <laughs> yep. throughout our viewing area. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so it's, and it's, it was great fun to shoot. Uh, everyone, thank you very much to all the volunteers that made yeah. it possible, because without them, None of this would have happened. Right. And they didn't take themselves <laughs> too seriously either. So when we did As the Corn Grows, mm -hmm. it surprisingly became 
pretty darn popular pretty yeah. quick. A lot of people were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Whether they're big fans or not, they were talking about it, which is what the goal was for As the Corn Grows. Well, because of the success of that, we decided to do some spinoffs. So we did the Cockabur Morning Show, which is our version of the morning show. We did the Women of Sweet Swine County, Split Hoof Tonight, Cooking It Up with Betty, just to name a few. And they all were filmed by the fictitious uh, TV show, mm -hmm. Cluck TV. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Cluck TV yeah. is in Sweet Swine County. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, so it just all turned into this whole storyline and backstory. Mm -hmm. And the more we did that, and the more we expanded that that uh, uh, storyline, the more people came involved. Mm -hmm. uh, the more uh, characters wanted to be on the show, the more people wanted to be guests on the show yeah. because the talk shows, we had real guests on fake talk shows. Mm -hmm. So it had that campy humor, but the subjects and the things that we were uh, uh, promoting were real. So when we started our story, Small yeah. Town Living in Its Best, seemed to be a very appropriate name. Yeah. But as we grew, Destination Small Town, because we're going farther out, seemed to be better fitted. Yeah. So we became Destination Small Town and our story productions type thing. Yeah. So that's how it evolved into what we now call oh, Destination okay. Small Town. Is it just television, or, or what other things do you do? Well, television, of course, uh, put us on the map and drew mm -hmm. attention that made all these other towns want to come on board. But as you know very well, mm -hmm. the Internet has exploded. Uh, and it's not me saying it for us, but just for all of us, has made such a difference. When we first started this in 2007, mm -hmm. somebody said, are you going to do a website? And I'm like... Why would we do a website? We're on TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like, right. Why would we do that? Yeah. Now we have this elaborate website where you can go on and you can look at towns, you can look at counties, you can look at regions, you can look at points, of, well, everything, mm -hmm. about everything. Uh, and so everything's on the web, including the television shows from the past and present. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, we're on TV too. Right. You know, yeah. it's just a changed world. Yeah. And we've changed with that. So are there things that stick out um, or places that stick out because of experiences you've had? Yes. Uh, a lot of these different towns, uh, I have personal favorites in different states. Mm -hmm. Fairmont's uh, obviously. Fairmont's number, number one. Right there. That's what I thought. Saying, I knew it. <laughs> but in different states, different sizes. Uh, Jamesport, Missouri stands out as one I like. Population about 800. I love the community because they really pull together and make it into a very much live tourist spot because it's a big Amish community oh, and okay. it's just a beautiful little town and they do a lot of clever things. I really enjoy uh, uh, seeing uh, roadside attractions okay, yeah. that are over the top. Carhenge. You know, that's uh, Stonehenge's version of cars, you know, in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, the world's largest peacock in, in uh, some place in, in, in uh, Kansas. My favorite town yeah. is Tightwad, Missouri. <laughs> Tightwad, Missouri. <laughs> Tightwad, Missouri. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think their population's 84 or something oh, like that. It's way in southern Missouri. Uh, I, I fell in love with the little town. Oh, and the wow. bank had tons of people that opened accounts there just so they could have a bank account in Tightwad. Wow. That's <laughs> so just that was incredible. Fun. So that was one yeah. that kind of stood oh, out. Oh, yeah. I can believe uh, that. Every state, every town. We only uh, promote towns of 10,000 and less. Mm -hmm. Every town has something of interest. And if we can tell about that in a unique, fun, entertaining way, it will help the town. It will help the business. Yeah. It's such a wonderful project that you've kind of taken on it and grown to what to what it is today. So we've talked about some of these, you know, the smaller towns and these wonderful like memories of different things that, that you've you've seen throughout the years. Uh, are there any other ones? Uh, you've got to have met somebody famous in the last, and, and not just me either. <laughs> like, there's got to be somebody <laughs> more famous. You were one of the highlights. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm here already. You don't have to butter me up. <laughs> so, but who else have you met? There's got to be somebody famous that you've met? Over the years, we've had interesting guests on the yeah. shows and, and met some interesting people. Probably some of the highlights. Uh, I really enjoyed when we had the Eagle Center uh, oh, yeah. uh, come on and bring uh, Harriet the Eagle 
uh, was wow. on the show. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, Lenny, Lenny Tweeden interview with Walt, Walter Mondale. Oh, okay. Uh, that was a she great was on interview. the show. Yes, well, or on one, uh, on of, the one shows. of our yeah. shows. Yeah. You know, so I thought that was wow. a great interview. Uh, I had the chance to interview clear back in almost the beginning. In mm -hmm. fact, the very first interview I ever did was with Will Hutchins. Okay. Now, Will Hutchins, you might not recognize the name, mm -hmm. but uh, Will Hutchins had a TV show in the early uh, late 50s, early 60s mm -hmm. called Sugarfoot. Okay. And then he went on to do several movies with Alphys. And so wow. he, his career is wide wide range well yeah. he and betsy palmer who's also uh, someone i interviewed at the same time performed at the opera house that's right and yeah. uh, did a great performance of love letters mm -hmm. and then i had a chance to interview them at our club at our story studio slash uh, fairmont film society yeah. uh, so it was really a highlight for me to get a chance yeah. to interview them i was a little bit nervous uh, I can uh, imagine, yeah. Because uh, they had done this sort of thing a lot. Yeah. I had not. Now, I'd like to think when you do a lot of interviews, and I've done a lot of interviews now, mm -hmm. you improve and you get better. Yeah. Or you just do the best you can. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> I do the best I can. Yeah. So uh, wow. those were some high points. Yeah. Uh, probably... Uh, uh, the soap opera being nominated for an independent soap opera award on mm -hmm. New York City, as well as we were in a film a festival yeah. in Clear Lake. Uh, someone called from there and said, we understand you do this quirky soap opera as a current mm -hmm. girls. We want to show that. Very And cool. we're like, you want to show our <laughs> soap opera on, on, at this? So we went down there. For them to show it, uh, a group of the volunteers and I and my wife went down mm -hmm. there to see it. And it was very interesting. They showed it. I was a little nervous because it is what it is, you know. Yeah. And afterwards, there's a gentleman sitting next to me. And he says, is this, are you guys part of this group? And I said, yeah. And he says, you nailed the camp. <laughs> you nailed the camp, quit, a kid. Mm -hmm. So I was like... Oh yeah, we got it, we got it. So it's th those kind of things were fun. And again, not taking ourselves too serious, but still kind of shocked uh, of what we're involved yeah. in. Uh, lastly, probably a uh, last highlight that comes to mind is we did an awards banquet uh, six months after we started, mm. honoring the volunteers. We called it the Starstruck Award. It does air upon occasion mm -hmm. in our area. Uh, it was all fictitious. So we gave we were given awards to ourselves, mm -hmm. but our competition would be like some sixty minutes versus our version of sixty minutes. Oh, and of course, yeah. we won. Yeah. You know, yeah. that sort of thing. Well, uh, the amusing part to me was uh, afterwards when I was walking down Main Street, several people stopped me and congratulated us on all the awards we had won. So we thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, it's just it's fascinating how how this has kind of grown and developed throughout time. Another highlight is probably we did a concert series. Oh, really? We had concerts once a month for a strong two two and a half years, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were really fun. Bringing in entertainers from literally around the country, singer songwriters for the most part, a lot of folk, a lot of jazz, and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So that was a very fun part. Hi, one of the highlights there being Bill Miller who uh, really? uh, singer-songwriter, a Native American, mm -hmm. uh, won the uh, uh, Grammy two years in a row as singer-songwriter for, for his, his career. Uh, so that was a highlight, as well as some somewhat Minnesota local-based people. Uh, Charlie Roth comes to mind, uh, Justin Roth, no relation. Uh, but yeah, we've had people from as far away as from New York that came here to perform uh, at our wow. studio. So that was wow. fun. Yeah, and we worked with the Opera House yeah. at that time very closely as far as making sure that uh, we promoted them. And yes, they even promoted our little deals mm -hmm. here too. So. Have there been other little side projects? Oh there? yes, there's yeah. been many little side <laughs> projects. Many things we tried that didn't work yeah. or, or or worked well for a short time, mm -hmm. or just was too big a project. Mm -hmm. One of which, in particular, is we did a magazine oh, in yeah. eleven. We did five episodes. It was a nice magazine. I liked the magazine, and it was very well received. Yeah. 
It's a big project. Yeah. It was like, Lots wow. of work. Yeah. It was like, wow. Mm-hmm. Something had to give. And uh, the television show was still growing and growing. So uh, we did a short, limited edition mm-hmm. of the magazine. But uh, uh, it, it, was, it was a fun project. Uh, we've done radio. We're doing radio now. Oh. We're appearing on uh, a, a local, in Mankato, a local mm-hmm. radio show. We've, we've been in countless magazines and uh, publications about mm-hmm. the history of our story productions and destination small town. Uh, the newest project is, we're on right now, yeah. Martin County on TV. Well, uh, some individuals asked me if we would consider doing another local, local show mm-hmm. that promoted organizations and businesses that uh, what's happening today. And we decided that we would do that. Uh, I talked to Shelly and she said she'd be happy to film that and we mm-hmm. uh, like yourself uh, yeah. uh, other entertainment venues many many businesses we've already interviewed done interviews with 42 citizens from uh, uh, Martin County yeah and we have scheduled almost 50 more for, for me when I watch the clips and watch the interviews uh, it's so educational well, and, uh, and I really appreciate that thank you and and don't you think too a lot of these people I've known for years that are coming up. Yeah. Years and years, like like most of our viewers. Mm-hmm. But I don't know a lot about them. You know, mm-hmm. why did they get in business? Why are they doing this? If they're working for the city or or uh, organization like yours, how did it all begin? What are they doing this for? Right. If we don't know what these people are doing, uh, the individual tends to think there's nothing happening in our community. Mm-hmm. When there is, and and for me too, it's interesting to see the drive. And like we're talking today, what what drove you to start this? What was the what was the tipping point for you to start your business or or move to this area or do this that the other? And then how you can well align yourself with other individuals in the community you may not have known. We've known each other for quite a while, and I didn't know the backstory of how this company started. And it's really interesting to hear about there was an opportunity, and there was an opportunity that. I, that people were asking you and nudging you to do and to take and and then that's how you got to where you are today and i think that's such a common story with a lot of people in small towns and i think that's really what you've highlighted through this whole process that there are people in small communities all over the united states and specifically the nine states that you go to that have a drive to do something better or do something different well just what you're saying the people uh, you'll see at the end of this show as all yeah. the shows the sponsors of the show these are the people that also believe strongly in 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 getting the word out about what's in our community making sure people know what's out there mm-hmm. these people truly make a difference and they work hard every day to make it happen and we need to support them. That's the biggest thing I can help. Yeah. Uh, if you check out our website, when you go on there, you can literally find anything, almost <laughs> anything yeah. you want to know about towns of 10,000 or less. I invite you to go visit this. Yeah. The biggest thing, when to get back to your question at hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Finally. <laughs> uh, the, the biggest thing I can take, by, take out from this is whether you're young or old like me, Work your passion. Find out what, how you can make a difference in your own way and do it. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, and I feel like I've done that. I uh, found my passion at the Opera House, and it's been wonderful to talk to you about that. It's wonderful to hear about yours. Now, if people want, and they all should, you all should, <laughs> To find out more about what you're doing. If I uh, haven't said enough for God's right. sakes. What, well, where can we find more information? What's, uh, what's the website? Uh, can we give you a call? Uh, what kind of things? Uh, what's your contact information? Obviously, to make sure we can find this? Uh, the website is where yes. everything's at. However, we are on Facebook. Be sure and like us at destinationsmalltown.com. Okay. And then the, the, the website, too, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, those are the best ways to learn about what's happening all the time. We, we cover a ton of different things. Uh, uh, from all, not only the towns, but the local shows. The mm-hmm. local show also has a Facebook page, which is Martin County on TV. Be sure and like that. You can see all the shows that we've done about Martin County uh, on there in the last couple of years. Uh, so I think that's important too. Yeah. And wonderful. if you have ideas for a guest, a show, or, or something you want us to do, call me.
Wonderful. Well, it's been such a pleasure, and I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, multiple times now um, and, and spending time with you and learning more about Martin County and learning more about Our Story Productions. Uh, it's been wonderful. So thank you for this opportunity. I it really fun. appreciate it. It's yeah. fun to be on the other <laughs> side of the... Of the of the table yeah <laughs> a little different but um it's been it's been really interesting so thank you so much for for your generosity and having oh. me here and, and thank you so much for your time and you telling the folks out there about uh your wonderful business here in fairmont <laughs> thank you i appreciate yeah. it all right that'll be all for today see you next time well there you have it another episode of martin county on tv we hope you enjoyed this episode and we welcome you to tune in again thank our sponsors for making this happen and remember it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.